Welcome to our video, China's Last Economic Gasp. I would like to focus on the commentary, the 17th of July 2023, by Mr. Derek Scissors, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, AEI where he focuses on the Chinese and Indian economies and on U.S. economic relations with Asia. He is concurrently the chief economist of the China Beige Book. It takes hard work to make 6.3% growth look bad. Decent in itself, China's just announced 6.3% GDP growth in the second quarter comes with a series of drawbacks. For one, Beijing's original 2023 target of a 5% GDP gain was initially seen as conservative. With zero COVID finally lifted, 7% was possibly in reach. But after a rise of 5.5% in the first half, China risks missing in 2023 the way it did in 2022. The National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, is a propaganda arm. The opening sentence of its Monday announcement nearly hit 140 words. And the propaganda arm is skimming over job creation. Last year at this time, NBS claimed 6.5 million new jobs created in a troubled first half. There was no jobs number in this report. A term to be worn out this week is base effect. China's second quarter of 2022 was weak causing last year's targets to be missed. The second quarter of this year should shine in an on-year comparison. It doesn't. Nominal GDP growth in Q2 in 2023 was lower than real growth. At 5.4%. This fits consumer and producer prices, and the outright deflation is especially worrisome when there's supposed to be a temporary boom. There are the usual data issues. The official Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index had three straight months of contraction April to June. Both the official measure of secondary industry and the Industrial Production Index show acceleration over the same period. This is possible because the measures seem to be comparable but aren't a reminder that Beijing's indicators often don't mesh. The same is true for GDP components. Fixed asset investment was said to climb nearly 4%. Compared to last year, it dropped 10%. There is an ongoing investment revision the NBS never explains. And which never affects anything else. Retail sales rose 8.2% in the second quarter, but only 3.1% in June. Consumers did in fact pull the economy along earlier in the quarter. But it looks like they stopped. Trade is being taken as a sign of Chinese economic weakness, but it didn't hurt GDP. The way an economy affects its partners is through the trade surplus. Not by being faster than average global growth. The first half goods trade surplus climbed 13%. Trade helped China grow faster than it would have, by displacing more foreign production. The mostly poor overall results will have the financial press writing interminably about the necessity of additional stimulus. This begs two key questions. Does Xi Jinping see it as a necessity and would any stimulus work? The answer to the first question has been no. Though the new results could prove to be the biggest test of Xi Jinping's tolerance of a slow economy. One, the monetary side, there's already attempted stimulus. The stock of bank loans grew 11.3% in the first half. While this represents a slowdown, it's much faster than GDP and debt is accumulating. To rev much higher from here would entail pressuring firms to borrow when they don't want to. China did this in 2009, causing a huge debt surge, one it is still suffering from. There is more space on the fiscal side, with the annual budget deficit small to date. The question is where spending would go. In the past, China has turned to accelerating construction. But there is certainly no need for that. Nor would construction create the jobs that the youngest members of the workforce, suffering 21% unemployment in June, are looking for. Worse. Stimulus would be a bridge to nowhere, figuratively as well as literally. 
If China borrows more and GDP does rise more quickly for a few quarters, then what? What will drive the economy when stimulus fades? An even larger trade surplus, for instance, would certainly bring more foreign retaliation. What's needed has been obvious for years. Reforms to boost productivity and income, and reassure savings-obsessed households. Xi has avoided this like the, he's avoided it. There have been signals recently that suppression of private technology firms is ending. That would be a step toward a sustainable medium-speed economy. Otherwise, this may be the last quarter of 6% GDP growth for a long time. That's all. Focusing on the commentary, the 17th of July 2023, by Mr. Derek Scissors. A senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, AEI, where he focuses on the Chinese and Indian economies and on U.S. economic relations with Asia. He is concurrently the chief economist of the China Beige Book.